I'm passionate about teaching gemology. I think I love those moments, those what I call light bulb moments, when you're, you're teaching a subject to somebody. And I think it's very important to teach the next generation of, of people in the industry the basics of gemology. It, everything clicks and they get it. And that gives me such a great you know, satisfaction. So this is the refractometer. This is my own personal refractometer. Um, it, actually, its full name is the Critical Angle Refractometer. It's one of the most useful and widely used tools used by gemologists for gem ID. For identification purposes, the most important single item of information about a gemstone is its refractive index, or RI value, as we say. The refractometer works on the principle of total internal reflection and indicates the refractive index, or RI value, of a gemstone. What actually is total internal reflection? Well, when light travels from air and enters a denser gemstone, the light ray is slowed down. Not only is it slowed down, but it bends. Now, think about a straw in a glass of water. And I've got a glass of water here ready. And look what happens when we put the straw in this glass of water. So your air is the less dense medium, hits the water, that's your denser medium. And look, it appears to bend. That straw is now not in line. Gemstones will also do this, and each gemstone variety will bend light to a differing degree. I've got a large gemstone here. Now, there comes a point in a gemstone where the incoming light, as it goes from the less dense medium to the denser medium, it's, it's at such an angle that the gemstone will cause it to reflect along the surface between the air and the gemstone. And we call this the critical angle. Now, each gem has its own particular critical angle at which this happens. Any light entering in at an angle greater than that critical angle is totally internally reflected back inside of the gemstone. Basically, the refractometer is measuring this critical angle, which then gives us the refractive indices value of the gemstone. The standard gemological refractometer, as we have here, measures the critical angle between this glass hemicylinder in here and the gemstone that we're testing. And it plots that on a calibrated scale, which we can see by looking through this eyepiece here. So most gemstones have two refractive indices since the light is split into two beams, traveling at different speeds when it enters the gem. This phenomenon is known as birefringence or double refraction, and it's expressed as a value that indicates the difference between the two RIs or that gem material. Now I can demonstrate this for you by using a piece of calcite and a printed word here, appropriately double refraction. If I put that calcite over that lettering, you see as I rotate it, it kind of comes in and out of focus. Well, what's happening is we've got doubling or splitting of light images from that gem. So like our calcite here, some gem materials are so doubly re refractive, it's so strong that we can see it with our unaided eye, which we're, we're seeing here. Some gemstones are singly refractive and only have one refractive indices. Single refractive gems include diamonds, spinel, and all the garnets as well as other cubic crystals, uh, crystal systems like uh, cooperite, fluorite, sphalerite, and amorphous gems as well, are those with no crystal structure. They are also singly refractive. Some gems have a refractive indices that's so high they can't be measured on a refractometer. But what do we actually need for successful testing? Well, first of all, you need a refractometer, as I have here. Now, there are different types of refractometers on the market. You have some with external scales. This has an internal scale. What I'm telling you here is based upon this particular unit, this particular model. The one I'm going to be using here today is a, is a GEMA model refractometer. We also need a gemstone to test, obviously. Ideally, um, this can be a faceted stone. It can even be polished. The important thing is for refractometer testing, we need a clean, flat, 
polished surface where possible. Any scratches, uneven surface, rough surface is going to mean a reduced contact between the fluid and the gemstone and we may get a misleading result. So, so check that out on your gemstone. Curved surfaces on cabochon stones can be measured. You tend to use advanced, more advanced techniques using that method. We also need a light source. The light source that you use will vary according to the type of refractometer that you're using. This refractometer actually has an inbuilt filter at the back here. A single wavelength light source, also known as a monochromatic light source, works best with the refractometer. Or you can use um, a sodium lamp such as this one here. And if I turn this on, it's a little portable unit, you'll be able to see that it produces um, a particular color of light, a sodium light source. We also need a contact fluid. Now the contact fluid, we will just pop on the um, glass hemisphere here, but contact liquids are used to create an optical contact, as I say, between the hemicylinder and the gemstone. This is to prevent air from trapping between the facet of the stone and the hemicylinder, which would ruin the total internal reflection effect. The refractive indices of a liquid actually sets the limit to which stones can be tested on the refractometer. So you can't measure stones that have a higher RI than that of the liquid used. Okay, so now we move on to the important fun part, actually um, looking at how we use the refractometer. So I've got my lid open here. I've got my refractometer fluid and gemstone to hand. The first thing we need to do is to clean the um, glass hemicylinder here where our gemstone is going to sit. And then I'm going to remove this polarizing filter here. I'm also going to turn my sodium light source on and make sure it's nice and tight. Next, we're gonna put a small drop of the contact fluid onto the hemicylinder here. We don't need much. You don't want your stone to float. Just a tiny, just a couple of mils. So now what we can do is place our gemstone on our hemicylinder, just table down, just gently using our fingers. We don't wanna be using tweezers or stone tongs to put our gem, whatever it is we're testing on there because they will scratch the glass hemicylinder and you don't want to do that because that, that'll muck up your refractometer. Keep the lid up and what I'm going to do is just look down through this eyepiece here and I see an internal scale, um, a numerical internal scale which is illuminated by this light here. Now if I need to focus at all in this particular model, what I'm looking for is the fine dividing line or shadow edge between the light and dark in this internal scale here. When you're taking your reading, you need to keep your head still. And then what you can do is just with your fingers, bring them gently up to either side of the gemstone and rotate the gem. Keeping your head still, watching out to see if you've got one shadow edge or two shadow edges until you take your gem through one complete 360 degree rotation. If we've got a single line, a single shadow edge, which is not moving, then our stone is singly refracting. If we have two shadow edges, one that's fixed and one that moves, or perhaps both move, then our stone is doubly refracting. We also need to be taking numerical readings as well to three decimal places. In this particular case, this gem is showing me two shadow edges. They're pretty, pretty close together. I've got one shadow edge which is remaining fixed and constant and the other which is moving. So that's telling me that this stone is doubly refracting. So what we need to do is take those two refractive indices values take one figure away from the other to three decimal places, and that will give us what we call the birefringence of the gem. That's basically the numerical difference between the two RIs. This technique takes a lot of practice, and it's best to use known gems, gems that you you know, you know the RI value of. So you can get practicing, you can get good technique, you can get everything in focus and start taking more accurate readings. 
The polarizing filter, which I, I took off initially, if you have a doubly refracting gem that has two shadow edges which are very close together, sometimes it's difficult because they're so close together. So this polarizing filter, which sits on over the lens, if we look back down at our shadow edge, as I rotate the polarizing filter, this polarizing filter allows one shadow edge to come into view and then the other. So we can focus and concentrate on one shadow edge at a time and we can get a more accurate reading. So we've touched very, very briefly on the use of the refractometer. Lots of students ask me when in the gem testing process they should use the refractometer. A lot of students want to jump straight in, but first things first, observation is the key, always. So always use observation with a loop before anything else. Then we can start thinking about instruments such as this. I tend to use polariscope first, then refractometer, and then other appropriate instruments from there. Some gemologists I know prefer to do refractometer first and then the polariscope. It's really down to a little bit of personal preference. I hope this little video has given you a little taster, an introduction into uh, the refractometer and um, a little bit into gem testing. It's such a fascinating and fun thing to do as well. It can be fun. And don't forget to like, subscribe and ring that bell. So I do hope you check out the other videos that we're going to be doing on various different other pieces of, of gem equipment and uh, happy gem testing. Mm -hmm.